I can't believe how busy this street is out here. Mm hmm. There's a lot of people living on this street. Well, and it's apparently a, a thoroughfare that right. they go speeding by. Right. Right. Here we go. So, I'm going to sit down over here. So, I just wanted to, you know, for, for posterity, for all the women who don't remember when you were here or remember it and want to make sure that there's a record of some of the history and you know I don't know you as well as I think a lot of people do here so I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about just sort of where you came from and well, you know I, your family and when you were a kid and then sure ask me ask me questions work your I, way up well tell me about your I grew up in South Missouri in the Ozark Mountain Hills and I turned out I was the third in a family of that turned out to have eight kids mm-hmm uh, so uh, by the time I was growing up, I had already taken care, of, helped take care of enough babies and <laughs> everything that I knew I didn't need to go, go out and have children. So that was a smart decision to make. Uh, but I also recognized early in my life that I didn't want to shack up any of those guys out there. I mean, it was obvious to me, and and. Since I've moved back to Missouri, I've met, re-met a whole batch of them, and I thought, boy, I made a smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to be shackled up with any of these guys. Uh, in anyway, I there were in those days you could be a if you were a woman you could be a a teacher, you could be a nurse or you could be a secretary. But the area where I was, where I lived, needed no nurses or secretaries, but they did need a teacher. And uh, an old man who was a good friend of my dad came to me when I was a senior in high school, uh, and and top of my class, uh, and he said, "We're going to need a teacher come August." And I said, "Oh." He says, "Yep, you might as well be that teacher." And I said, uh, I don't have money to go to college. And at that time, you could teach with 15 hours, college hours, I think. And he said, I'll loan you money. And so I borrowed the money, went to college. I think I got 19 credits that summer. Started early and went clear up until August. And so I started teaching school at Long Valley One Room Rural School. And uh, I actually kind of enjoyed it. What else do you want to know? Okay. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, I'm just trying to set up the camera so I can see you. So if you if you don't mind telling me a little bit. I mean, you can tell the camera, but you can just talk to me, too. Okay. So you taught at this little school. Yeah. And Long, then Long Valley School, grades 1 through 8. Uh, you not only taught them... And they had achievement tests back in those days, so, you know, you could kind of tell how well you'd done. But uh, you had uh, particularly softball games with adjacent schools, and you walked three miles one way to <laughs> and played softball all Friday afternoon. And, and that was only a reward. If you uh, had done well all week, you could, we could get off and play softball. Uh, so it was, it was fun. Now I had gone to school with all these kids too, so that was an interesting sort of setup. And uh, I remember one of my brothers saying to me one night when we got home, he said, okay, look, Lucy, when we're there, you're the teacher. When we come home, you're just one of the kids. So don't boss me around that way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that was the same brother that when I decided to come to Alaska out of Missouri, he had just graduated from high school, and uh, he said, I'm going with you. And so I drove up, and he slept in the back seat of my old Chevrolet. Well, it wasn't old then. It was 56 Chevrolet, and that was 1957. But he slept in the back seat, and I slept in the front seat all the way up to 
to Alaska back then, which was quite an adventure, actually. What made you decide to come to Alaska? Well, uh, I decided back in the country schools you didn't want to teach more than two years at any one school because you realized you were te teaching them not only your strengths but your weaknesses and therefore you needed to move on and give somebody else a chance. So I had uh, gone to Sullivan, Missouri, which is a, they called it the city school. Sullivan was just a large town and I taught there a couple of years and then I said, boy, I'd like to have something different. And I, I sat down one day with a map of North America and picked towns that had interesting names and wrote letters to them saying, do you need a teacher in your town? And Tegucigalpa, Honduras, <laughs> had an American school and they really wanted me. But Anchorage, Alaska sent me a, sent me a contract by mail in February of what 1957, I think that's when I when I went first came to Alaska. But anyway, I thought, boy, they want me, and so I did research, more research on Anchorage, and decided I'd like to try it and see what it was like. So that's why I came to Anchorage, and that was a very fortunate move. And I expected to stay two years here, and I stayed 37 years. 37. Yeah. I didn't teach all that time, but I retired from teaching out of Alaska, and that was a very fortunate thing, too, because when I first came to Alaska, men were paid considerably more than women in teaching, as they are in many places still. Well, we formed a teacher's union, and, and uh, even the men in the union said it's not fair that we get paid more than you because teachers tend to be pretty thoughtful. And uh, so we demanded equal pay, and they didn't want us to walk out. <laughs> so we achieved pretty well equal pay. And it, you didn't get equal advancement, and I'm sure you still don't either, but uh, I didn't want to be a principal or a superintendent. I just wanted to be a school teacher. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be paid decently for it, and, and so... That kept, that kept me here, and it was one of the most fortunate things that happened to me because we also got a good pension. We negotiated a good pension so that when, when you were retired, you could buy your bread and eggs and so forth. Now, the uh, bosses, the patriarchy keeps trying to cut us back on our pensions, but the, the teachers' union is still strong enough that they hang in there for us. And I hope that doesn't stop because, God, if you don't stand up for your rights, you don't get any, especially in hard times. Yeah. So you, how long did you teach before you retired? What? Oh, tell me about how your teaching and how long it was before you retired. Well, I, they uh, like first to retire after 25 years of teaching, because otherwise our pay kept, pension kept going up, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so after I had taught 25 years, and I taught eight years before I came here, so it would, would have been, what, 17 years that I taught actually in Anchorage. Um, and I had already been on enough committees and everything that uh, I had some name recognition. Well, I had, had been social studies coordinator for several years before I retired. And <clears throat> oh, stand by here. And we had uh, workshops and that kind of thing. And so my name was known in a lot of places in Alaska. So I thought after I retired, hmm, I'll just start my own business as an educational consultant and do workshops all over the state the way I've been doing as a social studies coordinator. So I, I did that, and uh, a couple of other teachers, <coughs> uh, Santa Green and Loretta Hefter, were parties to that. and So we just did workshops all over the state and got paid to go there. And <laughs> so, so that was pretty, pretty wonderful. And did that many years, and then every, every time we'd have a teacher's workshop, 
in Bethel or wherever, uh, if there was a lull in the conversation, the teachers would start talking about fishing. <laughs> and so one day I, I said, uh, these uh, fishing permits you're talking about that you have to have before you can commercial fish, if one ever comes up for sale, for sale, I'd like to know about it. So somebody from NACNIC called me and said, we, we've got a fishing permit for sale, a uh, set net permit, because we didn't have a boat and didn't want one. <clears throat> and so uh, I said, well, how much? And uh, he said, uh, $25,000. And I gulped because I didn't have $25,000. <laughs> but I got to thinking, and I knew five people with 5,000 each. <laughs> so we put together a co-op group and fished. I, I fished for five years, and five summers, and got tired of that. So, so we, uh, we ultimately sold our fishing permit out in Bristol Bay, too. But that was a, that was a good experience and a very Alaskan experience. Yeah. Hang on one second here. And I kind of accidentally oh. be 